Now that you know a little about Fourier analysis, we can talk about one of the main applications, filtering. There are lots of different kinds of filters, but there are four main classes that are usually applied to EEG or ERP data. First, we have low-pass filters. Filters are named after what they pass, not after what they block. So a low-pass filter passes low frequencies and blocks high frequencies. That's analogous to an air filter, which passes the air and blocks out all the gunk that's contaminating the air. Here's an ERP waveform that's contaminated with 60 Hz noise from the electrical devices in the recording environment. And here's the same waveform after we've filtered out everything above about 30 Hz. You can see that the waveform is basically the same, but the high frequency ripples are now gone. A second class of filters are high pass filters, which pass the higher frequencies and block the lower frequencies. We usually apply high pass filters to the raw EEG, blocking everything below around 0.1 Hz to get rid of gradual drifts that arise from non-neural sources like skin potentials. These low frequencies cause large drifts in the signal, but a high pass filter can remove those drifts, leaving the rest of the signal intact. We also have band pass filters. They filter out both the low and the high frequencies, passing an intermediate band. This is equivalent to applying a high pass filter and then applying a low pass filter. But instead of filtering twice, we can just filter once with a band pass filter. Finally, we have notch filters. A notch filter blocks a narrow band of frequencies. For example, if you're in Europe, your AC electricity runs at 50 Hz, and you might want to apply a 50 Hz notch filter to remove the noise induced by the electrical devices in the recording environment. Or you might use a 60 Hz notch filter if you're here in North America. Filters are often described in the frequency domain by showing the frequency response function. The x-axis is frequency and the y-axis is gain, which goes from 0 to 1. The gain indicates the proportion of the signal that the filter passes for a given frequency. A gain of 0 means that the frequency is completely blocked. A value of 1 means that the frequency is completely passed. And a value of 0.75 means that the frequency is reduced to 75% of its original strength. The frequency response function shown here is a low-pass filter. The low frequencies have a gain near 1 and are passed, and the gain drops to 0 for the highest frequencies. Filters are often summarized by the frequency at which the signal is attenuated by 50%. This filter hits the 50% point at 30 Hz, so we'd say that it has a half amplitude cutoff at 30 Hz. We can also quantify the roll-off of the filter, which is how rapidly the filter drops off. We usually do this by giving the slope at the steepest part of the filter. This filter has a slope of 12 decibels per octave. You may be wondering why the frequency response function drops off so slowly. As we'll discuss in a minute, a gradual roll-off like this is useful because it avoids time domain distortions that can happen with a sharp roll-off. Now let's see exactly how the frequency response function can be combined with the Fourier transform to actually implement filtering. Here's an ERP waveform that's contaminated with 60 Hz noise. If you counted, you'd see 6 peaks in a 100 millisecond period, which means that there are 60 cycles per second. Our first step in filtering is to use Fourier analysis to transform the waveform into the frequency domain. You can see the high level of 60 Hz activity in the transform. Now here's our frequency response function. The gain at a given frequency quantifies the amount that that frequency will pass. If the value is 0.9, then 0.9 of the activity will pass. So we can just multiply each gain value in the frequency response function by the amplitude at the corresponding frequency in the Fourier transform of the ERP. This gives us the filter data in the frequency domain. Notice that the low frequencies aren't changed by very much, but the 60 Hz is nearly eliminated. We then use the inverse Fourier transform to take the filter data back into the time domain. Voila! We have a filtered ERP waveform that looks a lot like the original waveform, except that the high frequency noise is gone. You can use any frequency response function you want. It can attenuate the low frequencies, both the low and high frequencies, or take out a notch somewhere in the middle. So we can use this approach to create any kind of filter we want.